really talks about on Monday, um, you know, of these three pillars, everybody's always sort of talking about you. Everybody tends to lean into uh, financial freedom. You know what I mean? Um, but you, I like to think about that trifecta. It's not just financial freedom, it's time freedom. And then the third one is location freedom. And if you can sort of solve the puzzle for all of those things, right? Your money is not related to an exchange for time. You have complete control of your time and can do whatever you want. And as Guy likes to say, I want to do whatever I want, wherever I want, whenever I want type of thing um, it, it is ultimately it. Um, and so one of the things that I really like to lean on because I always tell this story, I grew up just rich enough to grow up, grow up poor around all my friends, if that makes sense. You know, uh, uh, it was an affluent community. Uh, a lot of people had access to a lot of things. Um, and I heard a lot of amazing stories, right? People who would spend summer in Europe and that type of thing. Um, and, and I remember a story of a, a friend of mine whose neighbor was a, a very high ranking uh, uh, pediatric anesthesiologist, made millions of dollars helping uh, get kids ready for surgery. And uh, I remember they would tell a story, oh, they're gonna be spending three months in Europe. And I said, wow, that would be so fun, travel around Europe, do all this fun stuff, what a lucky life. And they said, well, the dad's not gonna go, he's gotta work. And that was an aha moment to me where it's like, look, you have almost everything you want, but you don't have any time to enjoy any of it. And I think that's one of those things where uh, the topic for this week is time freedom. But I think even on uh, the lowest side for me, Kathy, and I know you have other thoughts to this, it's really about creating some efficiencies to start in our own lives. If we spend, exactly. and, and this, this is the nature of people, right? We will, we will busy ourselves with work if given the opportunity, and we will do work for work's sake if we've got time available to do it. But it doesn't mean that that work is important work, you know? And so we can look for efficiencies with what we're doing that can, to start out, free us up more time. And then once we start to free up our time, it's what are you going to do with the time that you're in control of? Because for a lot of people, and we mentioned this on Monday, a lot of people, you know, there's a, a 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. time slot, a block of time that they are not in control of. They've already sold that off to somebody else. So somebody else has bought that time from them, whatever that hourly rate or salary is, and they don't have control over doing what they want when they want with that time. Um, so we only have control of the time we haven't sold off and what are we gonna use and how efficient are we going to be with that so that we can start to free up more time. And the ultimate argument that I made on Monday is if you are in 100% complete control of your time, isn't that the definition of retirement, right? Where you get to do whatever you want, whenever you want, okay? And so if we could figure out the strategies to uh, enable that for everybody, you know, that's, that's getting to the end goal. And if we could do it in a time frame that was less than the traditional 40-year block that everybody talks about, you know, let's say it took you 20 years, half the time, it'd still be a better outcome than taking 40 years to get there. You know, and I, I, I would actually claim if you uh, focus on entrepreneurship, if you focus on business, if you focus on system and process, you can truncate that timeline from a 40-year timeline down to five to seven years. And, um, and, and that's really some of the topic stuff we've been talking about this week. I know we'll get into a little bit of the, the soup to nuts of it on the Tech Tuesday at two here, um, but other things, we're gonna, we're gonna carry on with this topic on Thursday's Mastermind Roundtable discussion and sort of talk about some of those other uh, time freedom strategies and it'll roll into Fridays. And then maybe next week we'll talk about location freedom or we'll talk about uh, financial freedom. So, um, but from the time freedom, Kathy, I think technology, Technology is one of these things that can free up time for us and how we use and leverage technology specifically for today's topic um, can really help us take things that might be redundant. We do them over and over and over and over and over again. And then it becomes something that's like, boop, okay, I'm not going to spend the 10 minutes that I was spending. I'm going to spend the two seconds and I get to have that time back. 
absolutely and that's exactly i thought of that i thought of two things really i thought of it um both for us and then also for the people that we are in conversation with right so let me save myself some time right those things that i send or i text or i say over and over and over again yeah, make a yeah. card like we talk about that all the time um I know I was training a group over the weekend and of course everybody starts with their digital business card. I'm coming to this thing, you know, this uh, um, zoom and I'm going to learn about this new technology. And this is what I think it's going to be. Right. And then they start learning about shuffle and they're like, Holy cow, this is not what I thought it was at all. Right. And we start talking about ideas and it just, people's minds just go like, you know, I think all of us had that aha moment at some point. Right. So not only are we saving ourselves time, but we're also saving the other person time, right? Because I always say like, let them, you know, like we talked about, I think was it last week or the week before, like let them find their own story path to you, Yeah. but, but direct it in a way, right? So you're not just like, hey, it was nice to meet you. Here's a piece of paper. Good luck finding me online or whatever, right? Here's my digital business card. Here's my website. Here's my social media. Here's maybe some testimonial videos. Here's how to find me on this, 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 this. Go research me, right? I think that by you saving that person time, they also see the value. A hundred percent. A hundred percent, Kathy. And I think this is also this thing, and we were, we were actually talking with a, a group, Guy and I, yesterday. And one of the things that came up is how do you, we all do... This is what I laughed about. We all do these things that we think only we do, but that everybody else does. Kathy, you guy and I were laughing about this because we were talking about our web browsers. We got this web browser window, and then we've got all these tabs opened up. Um, uh, you know, our project manager, Curtis, he, he calls us tab hoarders, you know, because that's essentially what it is. We just hoard our windows because, and, and the reality is we laugh about it because we do it. And we were on a call yesterday and I told, you know, oh, we all do it. Well, here's what we all do before a meeting, or at least, if you're sophisticated, you tend to do. You go on and you creep out that person, you Google their name or you look them up online. You try to do your due diligence before you go into that interaction as part of your preparation. And think about that. You, they're up to their own, well, they're up to the Google results of what they're going to find out about you. And if you operate under a brand, I know a lot of people, um, you know, you're promoting uh, another brand. And you'd like to avoid some of the negative aspects that are out there in the ethosphere of the interweb of, uh, of about your brand, right? So when you create your card, to Kathy's point, you're curating the content that they're going to creep out on you anyway. So if you say, hey, here's my Facebook, you know, it, you could have a card for a resume. And do you think the HR, the hiring agent, or whoever's making that decision is going to go look you up online? And if you gave them an easy path to follow, oh, there's their Facebook. I mean, great, you know, or there's their LinkedIn or there's their website. There's all their, there's their portfolio. You make it easy for them. And Kathy, to your point, that sort of elevates you in their eyes as well and simplifies and saves them time. And so you're almost giving them a path to follow and curating the content that you want them to discover about you, as opposed to, you know, again, I, I, I've been using this card for so long and I don't even know if Lizzie's still around here, but the only way I could find out is if I just started Googling on her. Yep. And then who knows what I would find out, right? As opposed to if it was something digital and I could click in and, oh, there's her Etsy store or her Shopify or her you know, Amazon listing or her LinkedIn, all of that type of stuff, um, because we're going to do it anyways. We're all going to, if we're sophisticated, go out and do a little due diligence on the people that we're interacting or we're considering doing business with or might be considering doing it with us. If we can even find them, right? So I had a new member join my group last week and I was looking her up. I was going to invite her into a Facebook group and she uses a different last name on Facebook. Yeah. So then you've got that issue, right? So you're like, I actually need to friend you. I need to invite you to something or I want to invite you to something and you can't find them at all right for whatever reason you use a different name online or whatever um i just think that there's there's so there's so many ways to look at this i mean do you you guys have another version of how this gives you time freedom using shuffle anybody have anything like for examples i i really like that curated content one kathy i'm going to throw out some other ideas and hopefully this will uh stem some ideas about how, how you might be doing it uh, on a previous one you mentioned redundant activities I think this is the best time saver 
broker. If you have multiple cards, you know, um, again, maybe you have customers and every time you get a new customer, they ask one of five questions. And in some cases, all five questions all the time, right? Uh, how do I do this? How do I use this? How do I take this? How do I apply this? Um, it, it, it's always the fill in the blank because you have to remember most of the time when you're doing something new for, for the first time, especially a new customer, they're consuming or taking or dealing with your brand or interacting with you for the first time, they're going through it blind. It's their first experience. And if you can, again, save them time, but also save yourself time, because I've met a lot of people, post-enrollment is what we would call it, right? You've acquired a new customer, that's the enrollment. And now you're doing all the work that begins once you get a new customer. You can create content that supports that. So that getting started card, that welcome to the team card, that frequently asked questions card, the three examples right there that not only save you time, if you got that call because you're you know, rising to the top and you're adding people every day, getting customers every day, and you get that common question, that's your aha opportunity to step back and say, I need to create a card that supports this. And then when the question comes up, instead of sitting there for five minutes on the phone, you just send out that card and it takes one second. And then you've now saved yourself five minutes that you can do something else with, do another follow-up, send another card, uh, do something else. And then you're saving them time. They don't have to sit there and listen to you talk and then go back and remember what you said. They've got a reference point right there and they can well, follow even a, along. Even a Zoom, right? Even if it's just like, hey, we're going to do a Zoom meeting. Here's my link. Uh, I mean, there's so many things that we all use this for. What, what do you guys use it for to save time? Ruben. Hey, I just wanted to share a uh, a action, a massive, uh, what do you call that, ER, massive action? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I tried massive action the first part of this week because I lead an online group. All of a sudden, we had a visitor that just popped in. I saw her name, and, of course, I introduced her to the group and asked her what she did, and she's into mortgages. And I said, that's fine. I said, uh, can you leave your contact information in the chat? And she did, and then... I dropped in there a have coffee with Ruben LFI card. Yeah. Here's the data and sets up their time, whatever they need. She filled that out right away. And in an hour, we had the one-to-one. -one. Well, I have a script that I use. It's strictly a list of questions that I ask her. So the conversation is all about finding out about her, yep. where she wants to go, et cetera. And what the bottom line is that She's behind the office, in the, in, behind the phone, in the office, and she wants to get out to meet people. I mean, that's the desire, okay? So I asked her, I said, do you have a way to introduce yourself? Hello, you know, like a business card. She goes, yes. Could you take a picture of it? Now, bear in mind, we're on, online. She did. I screenshotted it, you know, and then I said, are you on Facebook? She goes, yes, whatever. Yeah, I have a picture with my children, whatever, it's fine. <laughs> so then I said, fine. I said, listen, uh, this is what I do. I'd like to continue the conversation, you know, uh, a little later on, can we schedule another time? He said, sure. So what I did right then and there, I went to Facebook and again, everybody's got tons of pictures of their kids, families or whatever, but I wanted a professional shot for yeah. her, you know, and I found one, it looked great. And then I took her company logo off the business card and put it up on top. And then the contact information I learned from Kathy, put my phone number and my email address in there. Yeah. And then since we're a messenger friends now, I, I, I sent it to her plus the QR code, color coded with her logo in it. And I said, hey, what do you think about this? Oh, this is great. I said, if you're interested, I'd like to uh, introduce you to a very easy process. And the process that I use is I found out a little bit more with Kathy when I called her last night. Right, Kathy? Yep. Yeah. A very simple process that I really, I'm going to adopt and adopt just to get into the mass market. And uh, all of a sudden, I just got a text that there's a two-way conversation. There's another realtor that's a friend of hers. And this is what she said. And this was at one o'clock this afternoon. Ruben. This is Kathy. That's her friend. She's interested in the virtual card you made. 
Okay, <laughs> bottom line, it does work. But do you see all the processes I had to go through? Yes. 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 I mean, like you know, duh. I've, I got a I got a digital business card. You got to have it. Whatever. That is not going to go anywhere. But yep. the the pro following the process, do the work, and do it daily is to help me through this process. Anybody? One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Share Kathy's process. <laughs> oh, 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 Kathy. Okay, Kathy. T tell them. Share them. Share them. Do you remember, it? Kathy? She does I a good job. Remember it? You can share it. Do you want oh. me to share it? <laughs> okay. I simply asked her. I said, "Okay, for the mass market, the free offer. How do you implement it?" And then she told me, "Okay, send send them the link. They continue the link. They go to the bottom. They click that link. Once they click that link, and you tell them to fill it out, they're yours." Yep. Okay, and then from there on, then you can follow up with them, tell them what essentially what they need to do. The next thing they need to do is download the app. Yep. And then fill out their email address and their username and password that you have too, so that you can complete that card that uh, they created that I created for. In other words, remove my email address and remove my my contact information and put hers in, and that's her first card. Mm -hmm. Simple as that. Did I miss anything, Kathy? Well, I think Annie has a question. Are you sharing that or cloning it and sharing it? Sharing that or cloning it. The card that I sent. The card. You? The card. Yeah, I think it's uncloned. So you're sharing it. You're sharing that card. Oh, yes. Yeah, right. In other words, yeah, I share the link to her and I send it through a messenger. Yep. And I think there's a few things in here I want to call out because again we are all in a process right now if we didn't even realize we were doing it guy and i always talk about it doing helping teaching it's a three-step process right doing we all have to get out and understand we have to acquire the skills and the knowledge to do you know what i mean we are all fishers out there we are all card creators out there we all have the skills we can acquire okay ruben acquired the skills of a process Give somebody a free card, right? Tell them to download the app, help them create their paid card. Here's the cool part. Ruben, did you even realize your ma take massive action not only resulted in a new customer referral, it resulted in another referral that came in. And if you're a team builder or focusing on that helping and teaching others to do the same, because now that you have that knowledge and skill, you are now a guide and can help other people's acquire that knowledge and skill like you just gave Anna you helped and taught her the process just like your customer comes and says hey let me introduce you to so and so they like that card as well you know what you can turn around and do you can say Anna thank you so much for that referral but you know what I want you to get credit for that. Did you know you can subsidize the cost of your premium subscription? Did you know that you can actually get paid to share? I can also help you and teach you how to do that. And we can get your friend enrolled. And when that happens, you get paid and I get paid. Unless you just want me to get paid, I'd rather us both get paid. What do you think? Are they going to turn around and say, nah, I mean... Hey, I thought people would turn around and say, nah, I'd love to get paid. I've seen people <laughs> leave money on the table and you're sort of sitting there going, okay, you know, um, but, but this, is, this is the reality. It's no complex than that. So if Ruben wants to scale, he just continues taking massive action and rinses and repeats that process. And then when he has a customer who says, I love it and I have an experience and I've shared it with others, he elevates that person up and says, you're capable too. And I'm going to show you, you know, I showed you A, B, and C. Now let me show you D, E, and F. And it'll start to expand. You know what I mean? So it's very, very powerful. Yet when you step back, it is so simple. And that's the key, right? We want to make everything so simple so that anybody can do it. Does everybody know where that link is to get one for free? Does everybody know where to send everybody to? Okay. Yeah. No, Shelly doesn't know. Okay. Sure. Yep. In the meantime, ER. Yes. Earlier, you were talking about three cards, getting started, 
something and then frequently asked questions. What was number two? I have no clue. FAQs probably. No, I got oh, the no. FAQs. Was the other one getting? Started. I don't know. I was just pulling it welcome. out. Was it a welcome stuff? It could what be was welcome. It? Welcome, welcome to the, to that the maybe team. Maybe a welcome card. You know what I mean? Welcome and again, uh, I think I think Anna, the biggest thing you can do. We all have what we call the moo, right? M O O, the method of operation. It's the process that you do on everything. And if you have a, a, a process that you follow, like what. Ruben was describing is a process. Right. If your brand, your product, your service, whatever you're you're offering right now is your primary stuff, you have a process that you engage with everybody. Detail out that process, even put it down in writing, and then circle the areas of that process that you can support using shuffle. So you might say, Oh, my process is a five-step process, but three of those steps I can support with cards. You know, so that can help you spin up ideas that are relevant to your business and your brand. Yeah, I got that. I just wanted to, to use the same languaging. So, you know, what you're sharing with me, what Ruben's sharing with me, I'm going to use the yep. same languaging when I'm talking to mine. Yep. So, and then yeah, when we, um, it's been a while now, but when we, I, I work with a big uh, network marketing leader. Um, and she did some custom cards for her team and Guy Niar helped us spin those up a couple of years ago. But basically what we promote on her team is have a card that's not salesy. That's just like about you. Right. So if you're out meeting somebody, um, I kind of sometimes you call it I call it the mom card or the PTA card. Like this is just the card like about me. Here's my name, my number, my, all my social media. Right. So you have the about me card mm -hmm. and that may or may not talk about your business. Mm -hmm. But then you've got a product card that leans straight into your business. You've got um, an opportunity card that leads leads into showing somebody your opportunity. Um, you have a welcome to the team card that gets them fully integrated, and then you have a shuffle card that shows them how to get shuffle and maybe the either um, you know right. back then it was how to uh, have us send you the information, but now it can just be the template IDs and how to get the cards spun up for them as a new team member. Yep. So um, that just Thank duplicates you. her team over and over and over and over. And then everybody that comes on, it's those same cards. Um, so this is, Shelly, this is the page. If you go to lfishuffle.com, send somebody to lfishuffle.com, make sure you have your um, yeah. code at the end of it and you have them go to get shuffle down here at the very bottom they can get the one for free. So that's going to be uh, one card, 10 contacts. It's just kind of, a, I tell everybody, it's like a just limited. Just click on it so we can see. Yeah. yeah all so it's going to do is adjust the pricing on the side if you look at it. Yeah. Just goes to zero. And you um, ER, tell us exactly what they get. Mm -hmm. Yep. So what you're going to get, and in fact, we could hit continue. We could put in some gobbledygook, Kathy, and we can show what uh, what pops up here. Um, but you put in your first name, your last name, your phone, your email address, all of the stuff that would typically be put in, and then you hit continue, and it's going to open up a shuffle version for them, but it's going to be a limited shuffle version. So they'll have uh, one free card that they can build, okay? They'll have be able to send that. They'll have their card index. This is another important thing when we talk about efficiency and, and, and time freedom. We want to be able to empower people to have our card and to share share their card, mm -hmm. That's not it. I'm trying to find, I have a free account. Hold on, I'm looking for it. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. That'd be great. And if not, I, I think I've got one I can pull up real quick. Here we go. So they're going to get the announcements. Yep. This is, they're going to see this. Yep, so the first thing they're going to see is a, we want to upsell them on your behalf. So even though you got them for free, we want to promote to them, hey, try it. And we're going to give them a dollar trial because we know once somebody leans into service. that, it will go into the full service. They'll see all of those things and then they'll have an option, continue to pay or downgrade back to free. And we find most people would continue to pay. So they can close that out. Up along the top, you'll see the same navigation we're all familiar with, right? Card, card index. So they can collect your cards. You can send them cards, activity about their cards, the contacts with some limited contacts, right? It only goes up to about 10 contacts. 
the channels for, for subscribing to things, the chatter. They have the other upsell offer, try premium for a dollar. That will always sit on their account up there just reminding them, hey, there are additional features that you can get. Um, and then the purchase tap card so that they can get their NFC, their tap card as well. You can have a free account and have a tap card. So keep that in the back of your mind when you tap onto somebody's information and they say, wow, that's amazing. You know, how much is it? Oh, it's $20 one time. What? You know, oh, it's $20 one time. Unless you need additional things that the tap card links to. And then you that opens up the conversation to say, you know, a, pre a premium offer. Um, they can go in and create a new card and they can spin that card up just like we are all familiar with spinning that card up. It is only the mobile builder, though. It's not the desktop builder. Correct. Good. That's and good. we are doing an update where they will only for uh, for now, it's still available. But um, once we flip the switch, we're testing some things right now. The free account will only have one template, what we're calling our free business card template. Okay. It's going to be really slick and really simple. Yep. At this point, ER, how do they get the card that I created for them? Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do is if you create a card for them, I recommend if you're doing a promo card, and we've talked about promo cards and the cloning of promo cards and all that stuff, and we're still doing some work on that, but the promo card that I recommend creating for people is one in the mobile builder. Right. Okay. Right. The I other, the other thing I, I would recommend is once we launch the free business card, I would truly recommend using that free business card template as the promo card. Okay. Okay. But uh, if you create a promo card for them using a mobile builder, the banner that is on the bottom of that, if you tell that person, oh, do you want to keep this card? Like to Ruben's point, they're going to call you back. Right. Anna, I love this card so much, but it has your phone number on it. It has your email address on it. Can you change that over to me? And that's going to be your call to action like, no, but if you click on the banner at the bottom of that card, you can create your own account and it will put that card into your account for you. So that's the first that's the first potential path. And again, we talk about multiple ways. There's multiple ways to skin a cat. That's one path. Create a mobile promo card with uh, with the uh, banner on it. And if they sign up with that banner, it will uh, add that card into their card here as their first card. The other option, and here's what's really cool, is when somebody comes in, even if they create a free account and they use your ID code, you're automatically connected with that person. Okay. So then you can share your card or that card you created via shuffle to them. And you can see right here, Kathy's got her card already in the card index. And then you can either do one of two things. You can coach that person through cloning the card and updating it. Or to Ruben's point, maybe you're going to get on a Zoom or you're going to have their login credentials and you're going to go in and just update it for them. Hey, ER, this is really something. Um, with Getting back to the example of this lady that came into the Zoom room. Yes. I, I, I text her in the chat a card that I created in Shuffle uh, that schedules a, a date at her choice and a time. And it was amazing because all of a sudden it went into the activity folder. Mm -hmm. When it went to the activity folder, it created the contact. Yes. That, I mean, all of a sudden I go, cool. So then I went to the contact to create the promo card. Yes. And all of a sudden it ends up in the index card. That's right. Isn't this neat how it all is a little bit more efficient to help you get things done and free you up with some time? And you're just now discovering some of these things. But imagine what it will be like after you've been using that newly discovered stuff for a week, a month, etc. It will become second nature to you. And that's what will really free up time is, oh, wow, it's really easy. I just send them this card. When they fill out that form to schedule with me, it adds them to a contact. I jump over there. I create a promo exactly like that flow that you're talking about. Here's something else I want to share with everybody from a time efficiency thing. How many of you guys who have QR codes are pointing that QR code to a shuffle card? Yeah. I'm going to put my QR code up. I'm going to, I know mine is pointing here, but I want to um, put this up. And then Kathy, I don't know if you want to highlight speaker. So it's a little bit bigger, but
But if you're watching this on your computer screen and you have your phone handy with you, what I want you to do is not open up your camera on your phone, but instead I want you to open this up and I want you to launch your shuffle app, okay? And what we're talking about is an efficient way to not only share information to people, but to Ruben's point, when you do it within shuffle, there are all these efficiencies that are gained. So when you open up your shuffle app and you're on your cards, right? You can see I'm on Doug's account and I can swipe through all of those cards that Doug has. What you'll see is up in the upper corner is a QR reader built into the shuffle app. But our QR reader is a little bit special because when it reads shuffle QR codes, they go straight into your card index. Whoa, so fast. And so when we talk about, and this is another one of these efficiencies that I think Kathy and all of us are going to be leaning on over the next series here is how do we efficiently network and connect with other people? Because when I can put my card not on their home screen, not in their phone contacts, but right in their digital Rolodex, right? And I'm not supposed to be saying that R word, but um, right in their card index, then, then it's easily accessible to them over and over again. And here's the other information. When you get it into their card index, and here's the thing, they can download the Shuffle app for free. They can have a free card for themselves. So there should be no logical objection for you to say, here's my digital card. You should save it to Shuffle so that you can create your own and I can have yours and we can refer each other business. And here's the other little secret tip here. Once my card is in their card index on the Shuffle app, if you've ever updated or changed information on your card and hit save, and it says, do you want to let everybody know that you've updated your card? That's for the shufflers. So when you hit yes, they get a little notification, even if they're a free user, you know, ER just updated his card. And that's another top of mind call to action to come back in and review my card and see, you know what I mean? What does it look like? Okay, ER, take us to the next step. We got your face on our phones. Right yes. there, I'm a prospect. Whoa, okay, I see your, your card. What's the very next conversational step you, you take? How do you get, yeah. What do so you, what, it depends what do you, on when I'm sharing this, if it's at the end of the conversation, right? Because usually I'm not like, hey, it's nice to meet you, here's my card. It's, hey, what's going on? And we're having this dialogue. And then we decide that we're going to end the conversation and continue it at a later time. And we're exchanging information to make sure that that happens. Okay. If that's the case, now they have my information. And if we're doing it this way, I would scan theirs and I would have theirs as well. And I could proceed forward with that process. And typically I'll say, I'll follow up with you and we'll set another time. And here's the reality. I will follow up. I won't be like the other 80% who don't. So I will send them out another contact touch point just to have that extra touch point. Do you see where I'm coming from? As opposed to setting it at that time. Or if it's the card you're sharing is that schedule a time with me. Ruben, if you click on the gear, you can open the card directly in the browser and it'll bring them straight to the card. And maybe that's the schedule the time with me or fill out your thing or any of that type of stuff. Also too, when you push that gear, you have clone, open in browser and share card. Yep. So again, if you're if you're setting somebody up at a live event, you could say, go download this app, open it up and scan my card, and then you can clone it. And assuming it's a clonable card, you know what I mean? Or assuming their account will allow for that. If you're using a premium or a marketplace card, it's a little bit different. When they open this card, ER, it goes to a page with all your information on it. When you hit the gear at that point, it says add to phone contacts, share this contact, merge or cancel your connection. Yep. I mean, for the average Joe, add to phone contacts, that's gonna blow their minds that they could create a QR code that would do that for them. Yep. Just that part. And again, you wanna lean into whatever's most relatable to the person you're talking with. You have to remember guys, this is what's so crazy. There's so much functionality that most likely we're scratching the tip of the iceberg on what Shuffle can do for them. And until we go through that discovery process, and I love Ruben that you were talking about, I've got a process of questions that I can ask them that helps me discover what their need is because 
Shuffle's like the, the letters of the alphabet, right? There's 26 of them, but I'm not going to go through every letter of the alphabet with somebody if I know all they're interested is in the letter H. Instead, once I hear that they're interested in the letter H, I'm leaning into that conversation. Oh, you want an easy way to get people to add your contact info to their phone by using a QR code? Well, funny you mention that. And then you lean into that part of the conversation, right? It's almost like, Anna, I know you work for Legal Shield, okay? And I know that Legal Shield has a massive amount of different solutions. If I'm only interested in identity theft prevention and protection, you're not gonna tell me about everything else under the sun until first you focus on solving the, the, the thing that I'm leaning forward on. Then we can start to have a greater conversation or you could pack it on. I'm actually in the process of creating um, a card just for Legal Shield Associates that they can get launched now a month before their um, before the convention. Yep. And that'll talk about the tap card as well. So they can take that right in and well, and this is the thing, right? Imagine Anna being on a video of a card offer for Shuffle that she's built specifically for offering to uh, Legal Shield members, where she's saying, Hey, everybody, this is Anna here. And I know convention is coming up. And we're all so excited to get out and see each other at convention. And we're going to meet new people and we're going to network and we're going to talk about all these great things. I want to introduce you to a tool that I'm going to bring to the event but really that I use outside of events in everyday life to build my legal shield business. And I wanna introduce it to you now before the event so that you can use it at the event if you choose to do so. And then you just highlight the three tips, you know, three reasons yeah. why you should bring this to the event. Here's why, number one, everybody's gonna be able to download your information and save it directly to their device. You know, it'd be broad. You don't have to get so granular you on your own. You don't overview. have to carry business cards around. Number At two, we're not going to be saying. walking around with 50,000 sheets of paper in our pocket that somebody's inevitably just going to throw in the circular filing cabinet. Number three, you're going to be able to add this to it so that when we're at the event, we've literally saved people time and saved ourselves time on the way we share information with people when we're networking together. Well, no. talking about what you talked about earlier, I mean, this is, I actually just had this conversation because I have a, I have a meeting today at 430 that I'm introducing this to a group for someone. And I was, you know, very specific. What, what do the people do that are going to be on this call? Yeah. You know, what is going to be too over their heads to, to do in a start, you know, the beginner call? Yeah. You know, what do we want to cover? What do you think is going to be the, the, you know, two or three most important functions for them? Yep. I'm not going to cover the ones that are going to be either too confusing or too advanced. And that's why I always tell people like, this is just, a, you know, you have to take, it's kind of like an elephant, right? You got to take shuffle a bite at a time. <laughs> you know, I think a lot of people don't even realize you've shown all the tips and tricks today. Like if you go to somebody's contact, you could not just see the cards they've shared with you for themselves, but the cards of other people that they've shared with you. I mean, there's so yeah. many little yeah. nuances to shuffle that if you keep diving down and keep hitting buttons and keep looking at the sub menus, you're like, holy cow, look at all. I mean, there's just really a lot to it. So it can get yeah. overwhelming if you don't take it a bite at a time. Very true. Very true. Could you imagine the first conversation you have with them is you're going to show them how to clone cards and create a strong microsite, you know, and they'd be like, <laughs> What? You know what I mean? No, I'm going to show you how to create a free business card. Let's yep. start there. Then I'm going to show you how to take that business card over the top by going premium. Then I'm going to show you how to create content for everything that you do. And then on the other side, I'm going to show you how to network like a rock star and be a follow-up master, you know? And what's really cool is that just in conversations with people, like this morning, um, I live next to a realtor. He's a, a broker. And I just found out that his daughter is came in uh, number 14th in their awards. And I know the lady that was number, I think she was number 11. And they all know each other because they're all under the same company. So this neighbor comes down and, and she was in the conversation. And then guess what I discovered? Her and her husband have five, pro five properties. They're flippers. They do, they do the information. They, they buy the property. They finance it themselves. And that's another question I ask her. 
plus they do all the work. Well, just imagine her having a card with all of those particular sources, the, the painter, uh, yeah. this and that, just in one thing that would be so easy and make their life a lot simpler. So it just, I mean, what happens is when shuffle becomes the idea in your head, it's amazing how it just permeates. You know? <laughs> but it's true, right? I mean, if you know me and you know that I'm the networker, why would you not want a shuffle card in my phone? Why would you not want me to have your information all the time so that when, you know, last night we had a huge hailstorm come through Texas. Who does everybody need right now? My dent person, my roof person. Yep. So do you want me to have Perfect. to go, oh yeah, I know somebody and here's their name and here's their number and blah, 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 blah. Or do you want me to go, <laughs> here it is, here it is. And I'm just sending it off. Yep. Well, and it's funny, Captain, because there are still some laggards Okay, out there. And, and I want to give two examples. I remember, and I, this is going to date me. I remember when things were shifting from DOS to Windows. Does anybody remember that? We used to key in things, the short codes and all of that type of stuff. I mean, yeah. I'm a tech guy, but it was DOS to Windows. And I remember when Windows came out, people were like, what? I'm never going to use Windows. I'm going to keep my DOS prompts and my commands and everything <laughs> like that. I know all my short codes and stuff like that. Like, ask yourself, this many years later, how many people are do, doing DOS, DOS. DOS? You know what I mean? A few, you know? But again, then um, guy was talking to somebody in a business networking event. And this guy, I mean, followed it to a T, but reaches into his pocket, must have pulled out a stack of cards this thick with the rubber band around it. And he was literally shuffling through his cards looking for that person. You know, Ruben, you got the stack right there. You know what I mean? Uh, Kathy's probably got boxes and boxes of it. And again, when we're talking about time savings, right? Look at Kathy. We got to get some pictures of that, Kathy. Oh, we'll have a contest on who has the most cards. I only take a week's worth out at a time. You know, but the reality is, a majority of people, especially the people who would most be been, uh, you know, be likely to refer you business. They're not walking around with your card in their pocket exactly. when it's a physical card, when the opportunity presents itself. And here's when the opportunity presents itself. You're in the grocery store line. You know what I mean? You're in the library, like checking stuff out. You're at your kid's soccer game, you know, rooting for You're the team. Vacation. And the other, all of that. All of it. I mean, that literally happened to us on vacation. I heard, overheard people at a beach bar talking and having a conversation. And like one of them was like, man, I wish I had a card on me. Or we were at the pool back when Caitlin was um, at makeup school in California. And there was all these kids having a barbecue. And they were all talking about how they were all in movie production school. And here's Caitlin in makeup artist school. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is a perfect comedy. Yeah. And there's nobody out there, obviously, with a business card. Of course, mom's thinking like our Caitlin, you know, go, 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 go. She's like, no, share your shuffle, share your shuffle. Well, uh -huh. and this is again another total addressable market where you can sit there and say, if I'm the person who is the inception of seeding it in here and it waterfalls through these two schools coming together, you know, that could pay my tuition in a way. So you have to be sort of out of the box thinking, Shelly, I saw your hand go up. I don't want to um, overlook you, please. You know, we had an event last week that I went to and my events uh, coordinator, she says, well, do you have a bunch of business cards? I said, no, I've got this. I'm digital. And she's like, she looked at me and she's like, you're not going to have business cards. I said, no, you watch. I'm going to get everybody's information this way too. Yeah. And she didn't understand this until I showed it to her. And she's like, I don't even know what to do. <laughs> um, but I was able to also send them our website where yep. they can sign up for our memberships, all yep. that stuff with a card. Yep. You need to recruit it. her so she can offer that as a benefit. I've to and I've talked to her about this with her. She's a realtor. Yeah. And I told her, you know, but now she's going to get out of the real estate business, get into her other, another business. I said, you still need this. You, every yeah. business needs and this. Change period. it on the fly. Yep. So I'll get her. Well, let us <laughs> just know for her you events. Support her help. Awesome. You know what I mean, Shelly? If you need any help or support, you just reach out and I think there's a huge opportunity. I've been talking with Kathy about this. I'll, I'll, I'll mention it to everybody on here, just in business networking. Yes. You know, type in business networking and your big cities within 10 miles of you. You know what I mean? And you're going to find so many different groups. 
And these are all people that are specifically going in with the intent to network with each other, not to do business with each other, but to learn about each other's products and services so that when they're out there, they can refer each other business. And if you can enable and empower that, like, oh my goodness, you know what I mean? So we would like to do a, you know, a diligent focus campaign just on targeting, targeting that type of segment and, and, and I, reaching out to those people. Interject Kathy's word. We want to expand. So don't yeah. just include the big cities in your area. 100%. What, what big cities do you want to go visit? A hundred percent. Then you have a business connection there and you're, you know, writing it off to your business. Well, that's what and I was going to say. You write, go. write that off. Write it off. Um, I know we've only got about. Too, that, um, you know, we, we say that when we're networking, what I always hear and what the kind of one of the catchphrases is, is, you know, you're not trying to sell me. Right. And this is why I always try and explain to new networkers. Right. You're not trying to sell me. You're not trying to sell the room because that's what new networkers think you're trying to do. Right. You're trying to you're trying to get to my contacts, right? You want the 1600 contacts that are in my phone, right? But in my phone, I don't just have contacts, right? I have people's information. I have real contacts. So it's it's really trying to expound on that and explain to people like, you know, not only can I share your information and, and hold it in not just my contacts, but I can literally share a little 30 second blurb about you and your business in my phone versus yeah. what you can hold in your phone. Yeah. And if you build your card right and provide it to Kathy, now she's just forwarding along and you've created the content that Kathy's going to reshare on your behalf. Yeah. I mean, make your, make your, so card your 30 second commercial. So, so powerful. Yeah, where are we? I don't know. I'm not even watching time. 10 minutes. Any questions? 10 minutes. Guys? I did want to share this Have one thing I was, I was reading through my local paper, and if anybody has a question, raise a hand or put it in the, in the chat. But this little article was here, and it's, you know, is selling an art or a science? And it's just a little article. I'll probably take a picture and post it on the social. Um, and when you read the article, it's got great anecdotes on both sides. But the reality is, it's both. It's it both, right? It's both. And the, the science part of it, and I'm a big math, analytics, you know, uh, statistics type of guy, that's the science part. To Ruben's point, there is a process that you can follow for anything. If you're selling horseshoes or hand grenades, again, there's a process to promote those things, okay? But also, there's an art to it. When you just follow that scientific approach, I don't know if you've ever heard new salespeople, it's like sound super robotic and canned. They're like reading through the script. Hello, Anna, how are you today? You know, and you're just sort of like, nah, okay, you're following your process. I get it, but it's not very animated. When you learn the process and when you put your spin on it, and I think that's the key because we are all capable of acquiring the knowledge and the skill of the process. But then- I want to encourage everybody, once you do that, put your spin on it. When Anna talks about what she loves most about Shuffle, it's what Anna loves most. You know, and when Ruben talks about it, it could be a completely different functionality, but it's what he loves most. And if you lean into that and you personalize it and you, you, you put your spin on it, you use your art artistry to that, you can still follow that prospect, but when you combine both of those things, it's like having a superpower. So I'll go on ahead and take a quick shot of this and I'll throw it into insiders or something, maybe uh, affiliates. And if anybody wants to take a look, I found it to be interesting. I'm just trying to think of the last time I had a newspaper. <laughs> this is that neighborhood one that drop off like once a week, you know? Like, when's the last time I opened a newspaper? Right? We, got, like, we have a local one. <laughs> <laughs> totally different topic anybody Fox, have any questions yeah. anything we can answer uh like i said we just i wanted to continue on on the theme this week and see what everybody talked about with time i mean time saving right we're always trying to save time nobody has enough i don't have enough time i don't know about y'all maybe y'all are just sitting around going like i got nothing to do i got plenty to do if y'all want to do some of my stuff because you're just sitting around just let me know <laughs> i have a super quick weird question so yeah. that the free promo card. I noticed something like when you were going through the stages, mm -hmm. 
it, there's a area down below where it says, did somebody refer you with the number? And it looks like you can almost unclick that and bypass that. Is that true? It is not, Shelly. Okay, just checking, just checking. <laughs> but for those individuals, and, and, and here's the reality. I've met people out there who, even though they like you, they don't want you to get credit for anything. I know. You know what I, mean? I know there's those. That's and, why and I'm he, asking. <laughs> and here's the reality. The only thing that they can do, whether they click that button or not, whether they click that little box and it shows it or not, it's going to pass through your data in the background no matter what. Thank you. Okay, the only thing that that's there to is if they click it and they've got the wrong thing in there, they could reach back out to you and say, hey, what's your number? And they could physically override it as long as what they're putting in matches another one. If they put gobbledygook in, yours is still in there in the background. Nice. So again, it's by design. There's some psychological stuff to that. And I've even seen people clear it out and, you know, close it down like, you don't want me to get any credit for this? Okay, I don't know why. I just saved you by, you know, giving you my code and stuff like that. Um, but there's always that one here. Yeah, there's always yeah, that one. I saw that. I go, uh, I need to ask about that. No, great question. This is what this is for. If you ever have questions like that, there, there is a method to the madness on everything in LFI and shuffle. Um, I usually say that it's to our good and <laughs> you guys are, you do the right things. You really do. I mean, uh, there's been times where I've seen things just go right back to doTERRA. So I know there it's about them. You know, yeah. I mean, they do a lot of good. Don't get me wrong. Millions of dollars all over the world. But I yeah. watch what you guys do. And it is always for the greater good of everybody. Truly. Well, we appreciate we appreciate that. We appreciate that. Well, I, I want to give one last little anecdote and, and, and conversation about uh, about time freedom and, and efficiency and optimization. And. I want everybody to take an opportunity in the last few minutes here to think about something that you do over and over and over again. You might do it multiple times a day. You might do it one day a week. You might do it one, you know, uh, every day, but once a day. But think back on those things and then ask yourself the question, am I being efficient in the way that I'm doing this thing? Even if that thing doesn't need to involve or, or, or leverage the technology, just think about that one thing. And I'm going to give you an example that I've done in my life, and it may sound so trivial and, and, and funny, and you can look this up on Google. If you've ever tied two strings together, tied your shoes, tied your laces, et cetera, there is a way to tie your shoes that takes about half the time of you know, the loop, swoop, and pull that we all learned in school, right? And once you learn how to do it, it's like, whoop, whoop. You know, it's so fast. And I don't know, for 10 years, I've been implementing this little time-saving strategy. And the reality is it may not seem like much when you're doing it, but when you think about how often you do it, that's the, the time savings that adds up. You know what I mean? That's the thing that when you sum it all together, I don't know, in 10 years, maybe I've gotten 30 minutes of laces tying time back and been able to apply it somewhere else. And here's the reality. When you start to look at it in the framework of everything that you do and the little things, that's when you'll start. The, the seconds will turn into minutes. The minutes will turn into hours. You know, the hours turn into days. And that's when you get to the point where, you know, a, a five-day work week may turn into a four-day work week. You know, a four-day may turn into a three-day work week. I, I was a big proponent early on of Tim Ferriss's four hour work week. One of the reasons why we do four hour long calls every, you know, every week, because it doesn't have to be that complex. If we stop doing work for work's sake and we start focusing on the revenue generating activities in our business, being efficient and productive with our time, it's going to free up time for you to have ownership of that. And then you can choose what you want to do with it. If you're like me, maybe it's just being with the kids and playing outside or, you know, catching up on that episode or doing that hobby you like, but that's what it's all about in my mind. You know what I mean? I don't want to be doing work for work's sake. You got better things to do. Anna. Well, not, not only that, just, but I think, um, you know, the, the whole thing on, on um, 
multitasking, right? I have ADD in a horrible way. And if I find myself saying like, oh, I'm multitasking, I'm really getting nothing accomplished, right? But if I sit down and make myself, you know, pull in that superpower and, and really make myself concentrate, I'm like, okay, now I've checked some stuff off today, right? So it's the same, anywhere I can save myself just a few minutes or redirect myself to stay on task, super helpful. Sorry, Anna. No, that was great. That was great. Absolutely. Um, I just wanted to say that Shuffle has done one thing for me over the past few years. I have answered calls to new members and existing members over and over again, answered the same questions, helping them to maximize the service. This mm -hmm. company and service has been around for 50 years and I'm still doing that. So I was putting together this concept of I'm going to do this series of little videos on different ways to maximize your service. Well, Shuffle is going to allow me to put that on my business card instead of having to post it here and post it there and, you know, and cycle. I'll be able to send that out to all of my members and they'll have a tool yep. to go and see how to maximize their legal shield, ID shield membership, their small business membership, and they'll have access to my info. And I am so flipping excited about that because we're talking 30 second videos. Yeah. You know, they're not going to be big, long things, yeah. but if some, someone can go to my business card and, and find out, you know, how do I ask an attorney a question? What's the best way? Well, it's always, always ask for advice on, get yeah. the free area first, yeah. maximize from that and let them tell you when you have to go further. Yeah. But, you know, it's just, I they won't have to go look for it on Facebook. They won't have to find it in LinkedIn, you know, or go to a website and that links to my page. They can go to my business card and get just for members. I love that. Right. All my associates are members too. So. Create that card. Now that you've had the idea, put it into action. Implementation is going to be the biggest thing. That's what Ruben was talking about, right? Like implement, take massive action. Right, learn the process, implement it, take massive well, action, do it daily. Start with two or three small videos, put the card together, send it out, and then add a video every couple of weeks. There you and go. It's just like touch and base again, another connection, another connection. Yep. So, thank start you with so prioritizing much. that list and then chunk off the top ones. So, well, the top ones will always remain the same because they're always the same three questions. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but do those ones first. Do those ones first. I may do a, a new background or something for <laughs> be the same. <laughs> there you go. There you go. That's easy enough. Awesome. Well, awesome, guys. Well, if you don't have anything else, I'm so glad we got to visit today. Super fun to see everyone. Good, good, good. Everybody good? Yeah. Good. All right. Thank you. Well, we will Thank see you. everybody <laughs> next Tuesday. If you have any questions, make sure you get them to us. Drop them um, in Insiders or here or wherever. We'll ha happy to answer them. Okay. All Thanks right. Money. Yeah. Thanks Thanks money. Yep. See you guys. Happy St. Patrick's Day, everybody. You yep. too. Thank you. Into the green. Into Aaron the green. Right. <laughs> Bye, everybody.